Oh my gosh, we're recording. Epic. I've never done a Q&A before. Hello, and welcome to this Q&A. Um, thank you for joining in. Thank you for the questions you guys asked on Instagram. In the future when I do Q&As, I will be asking on Instagram and on YouTube. So if you have any questions you want to ask me for our next little Q&A, drop them in the comments down below. I'm going to be switching back and forth between the questions on my iPad and my Pinterest. That is what you'll see happening over here. But the first question is one of my favorite questions, and it is, how did you pick the names for your cats? So I have three cats. Uh, they're Myla, Adelaide, and Sushi. Myla, I got her when I was nine. I didn't care if I got a boy or a girl, I was gonna name it Milo. And when I got her, I was like, I just can't name it Milo because it's a girl. Like, all of a sudden, it bothered me that Milo was a boy name. <laughs> so, I changed Milo to Myla because I thought it sounded more feminine. And then, Adelaide is one of my newer cats. I adopted her shortly after my wedding. I want to say it was in March. Now Adelaide is a bit of a different story because I wasn't nine years old when I named her. I was obviously in my 20s. I got her from our local shelter and it was I was having a really hard time. I was really lonely and so I felt like I needed to go to a shelter, which is obviously not a good idea when you're feeling pretty lonely. <laughs> it was just funny because I told my husband, I was like, I don't know if I'll come back with a cat today. And then I called him while I was there and I was like, I'm coming back with a cat today. I was there for like two hours and I ended up talking to one of the people running the Humane Society and asking about Adelaide. I was like, how long has she been in here? Like, I just asking the usual questions one would ask. Said that she had been in there the longest out of all of their kittens and that nobody wanted her. So I immediately was like, oh my gosh, I have to take this cat home. She's never known what it is to be wanted. And that, like, hits home. I want, <laughs> I want to give this cat a, a good place to live and, like, show her that she can be loved and when i got her she was borderline feral <laughs> she still doesn't like to be picked up she didn't really know what it was like to be pet and loved on so it was this huge learning curve so the whole time i was trying to figure her out and she was probably trying to figure me out um i was just watching her behavior and she just didn't act like a cat named Tart. She was so sweet and she was so shy and she just reminded me of this little lady. And so I felt like she needed a really classic like lady name. I was thinking like Deep South lady name and I couldn't, I had this list of names, like I, I thought about Beatrice, I thought about Mabel, I thought about all these different names and I just could not pick one. So I I was trying to figure out which one fit her and to see what one worked. And I called her uh, Mabel for a while because I thought that was the one and she, it just didn't fit her. I was like, no, never mind. That one's obviously not your name. And then I called her Beatrice for a while because I was sure that was going to be her name. And I think that would have been an okay name, but it just did not fit her. And I was just not completely sold. And I wanted to be completely sold on the name. And then I was like, maybe it's meant to be Adelaide. I called her Adelaide and that was the first time she ever like booped me in the face with her nose. Like, you know how cats headbutt you and boop you? That was the first time she ever did it. And I was just like crying. I was like, this is your name. You wouldn't even know she was the same cat that I brought home from the shelter. She has gotten so much more confident and she's just such a sweetheart. You know, cats like can feel when you're feeling sad and stuff and I believe 
wholeheartedly that Adelaide is really sensitive to other people's hurting, specifically hurting. I had a miscarriage earlier this year and that was the first time she cuddled with me. She like cuddled into my neck and just brought me so much comfort. It's such a hard time. So she has really been a godsend and just such a sweetheart and I love her. So then after Adelaide, I told my husband, I was like, that's it, we won't get any more cats. And then, like I mentioned, literally a few seconds ago, I had a miscarriage, um, and that really rocked me, because my husband and I want to have kids really bad. After it happened, I just had the hardest time adjusting back to the way life was before we were pregnant and all that and I was just having like so many so many questions and so much pain so then I went to go stay with some of my lady friends while I went to stay with them we were dropping off another friend at his house and I walked in I don't even remember why I walked in because I don't know this guy very well but I walked in when we were dropping him off and he looked at me and he was like, hey, do you want a kitten? And I was like, oh my gosh, you can't ask me if I want a kitten. Like, who doesn't want a free kitten? Nobody. So I walk in, he asks if I want a free kitten. I was like, yes, but I need to talk to my husband first. Let's just go say hi to the kittens. And if one like really speaks to me, then I will call my husband. That was when I met Little Sushi, and I was actually holding a completely different kitten, but then the guy that we were dropping off, he was like, look at this little guy. And so he hands me this kitten, I'm immediately in love. But I was like, I just don't know if I can commit to taking one home, because I don't know if we should, and I was just very uncertain about it. So then I put the kitten down and we were trying to head out and as soon as I did that, Sushi followed me out of the room. That was when I knew, I was like, dang it, I am going to have another cat. So I call my husband, we work it all out, and I'm going to bring this kitten home. And he really didn't want another cat, so I was like, okay, if you let me get this kitten, I will let you name him. And he was like, okay, that is a fair trade. <laughs> so I really wasn't sure what he would get named. Um, if I were to have named Sushi, he would be named something from Lord of the Rings. I probably would have named him Radagast or um, Bayon, something like that. Cause he just has Lord of the Rings vibes to me. My husband, saw him and started to spend time with this little this little rascal that we now have and then he was like okay i'm deciding between two names three names actually so the names that sushi could have been named were rice spatula and then sushi I strongly expressed my favor for sushi out of the three names. <laughs> and then the next day my husband was like, his name is Sushi, and we were like, oh, how cute. So since then, he's just been my little, my little guy. And that was how all three of them were named. I'm sure you didn't really expect to get the entire story on how I got all three of my cats, but there you go. So next question is, what made you want to start drawing? Like one of my driving factors for really wanting to start drawing was, I was just going through some stuff when I was a kid that kids shouldn't really go through. And I had a lot of pent up emotions and I turned to drawing and creating things. I think it was when I was like 10 years old that I was really like, I actually want to pursue art for the rest of my life as a career and as a living. I have never super known exactly what I was going to do. Like, 
like flipping back through sketchbooks, I'll write things like, oh, I'm gonna be an animator, oh, I'm gonna be a storyboard artist, or oh, I'm gonna work on comics, and I think all of those things would be fun and awesome. On to the next question. This one is from one of my best friends, and she asked me what my go-to coffee order right now is, and I feel like at every coffee place, it's something different. I've been really trying to support more local coffee businesses lately. One of my go-to coffee orders from one of our local places is called a Honey Bear. I think it is raw honey, and then you do vanilla powder. Um, when I go to Starbucks, my go-to coffee order is a salted caramel cream cold brew with sweet cream in the drink. There's another coffee shop that one of my best friends works at and my go-to coffee order there is a Black Falls mocha. It basically tastes like a brownie. If I don't want to try something new at Dutch Bros, I always get a- this is gonna sound like a really complicated white girl order and I'm very sorry but here it goes. So it is a half sweet iced annihilator, and then I do soft top and chocolate drizzle on that. And that is my go-to Dutch Bros order if I'm going to Dutch Bros. So there you go. There you have it. Those are my go-to coffee orders. Do you have any favorite background sounds to draw to? So I would say my favorite like background sounds to draw to. I listen to a lot of music. I am a music babe all the time through and through. I make a lot of playlists and I make playlists for characters and for stories that I have so I listen to those a lot when I want to be inspired. I also like to stalk my friends and listen to their music because I like what my friends listen to. And then if I'm not doing that I like to listen to YouTube playthroughs. Like the one I've been listening to right now is uh, Stray. I'm gonna sharpen my pencil again so you'll have to forgive me. Um, but I've been listening to Stray and that's the cat one that just came out. And I'm watching Jacksepticeye's playthrough. I also really like podcasts. I'm gonna try out audiobooks here very soon. That is some of my favorite background sounds to draw to and listen to while I create stuff. I'd say I go to Spotify the most, but sometimes I get really tired of my own music and I just need like a break. On to the next question. So the next question is a juicy one. It's my current favorite OC. So I have a lot of OCs that I've been drawing for a long time. Um, so I recently have decided like to make new OCs and revamp old ones. And so I've been really focusing on my comics because I'm working on one and I have, I think, 10 main characters in that one that I'm getting all flushed out. So if you ask me like um, three months ago, I would have said, one of those guys is my favorite. But right now, I just got another idea for a webcomic, and I think Crawford and Maybell are my favorite OCs right now, because they are just so fun. Their story is so fun. It's a comic that I'm really excited to do. Actually, I actually have both my comic names figured out, but I'll tell you about this one, because it's gonna be a while before it happens, so you'll probably forget. It's called Sleepy Constantine, and it's a mystery, like, it's kind of like a mystery thriller comic, and thank you. So it's a mystery thriller, and I really like the OCs in it, because they are just two teenagers trying to figure it out, and they like each other so much, and they just don't know what to say, and I think it's fun, because they're awkward, and I just love them. Look at this little boy, he's so funny. So, those are my favorite OCs right now, Crawford and Maybell. The next question is my favorite part about making art. I think my very favorite part of making art is the ability to tell stories and kind of 
make my imagination come to life. I love, I love that I get to show people the way I see the world. But I would say that's my favorite part about making art. I love that my imagination gets to come to life. What drives me to make art, I think. What drives me to make art is the ability to share stories and share the way I see the world. And I think everyone has a different way of seeing it. And even though like everybody says like, oh, nothing's original and everything can be like has been done before. Like if you see it, it's been done before. Yes, that is true. Everything has been done before, but I don't think everything has been done before in the way that you want to do it. Like, if J.R.R. Tolkien didn't write Lord of the Rings because fantasy has been explored before, then we would be robbed of all of this amazing, wonderful stuff that came from his imagination. And so I think even though things have been done before, nobody has done it the way that you can. And I think that is one of the main things that inspires me to make art. Yes, everything I'm doing has probably been thought of and done before, but not in the way that I am going to do it. And I think that's why I love to see everyone's different take and interpretation of things, because no one has done it the way that you're going to do it, you know? So, I don't know. No one can do it the way your imagination will do it. And I think that is really important to remember. I think my husband asked me this question is, do you enjoy art or do you love it? And obviously, I love it. If I didn't love it, I wouldn't do it. <laughs> Ooh, my favorite breed of cat. That is kind of a hard one. I, I kind of like m mutts. <laughs> I like the ones that you find in the pound. <laughs> I like the ones that you get for free that have lived in a barn their whole life. I just think they're so sweet. I don't know the breed of any of my cats except for Myla. She is half Turkish man, half tomcat from the street. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't think I've ever gotten the opportunity to really fall in love with like a breed of cat. I think I just fall in love with my cats. They're funny and weird. My favorite movie. Oh my gosh, that's such a hard one. I'm gonna say what everyone says. I don't think I have a favorite movie. And the reason why I don't have a favorite movie is because I have a lot of different movies that I love equally. Um, but I will tell you some of my favorite movies. One of the movies that's been my favorite for the longest time is The Last Unicorn. I have, like, tattoos of The Last Unicorn. I have all these unicorns, like, coming out of the sea. I have Amalthea. Studio Ghibli is my... Oh my gosh, he's back. The man himself! Uh, Studio Ghibli is probably my favorite, like... Sir, you can't have coffee. But Studio Ghibli movies are probably some of my very favorites. I really like Jurassic Park. Um, my favorite Disney movie is Lilo and Stitch or Tangled. Those are some of my favorite movies. You could probably put on any Studio Ghibli movie and I will just die and be so excited. My favorite series is... I think if I had to pick, like, an all-time favorite series, I can't believe I didn't say this in the movies, but Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit, obviously, are some of my favorite things of all time ever created, and Prince of Egypt. I literally just remembered, like, a slew of favorite movies that I have. I love Sinbad. I love all the early, like, DreamWorks stuff where they were mixing CG and freaking 2D animation. I think that was so fun and so cool. And the Treasure Planet, all that stuff. Very good. 10 out of 10. Would recommend. Um, and the Iron Giant. I have an Iron Giant sticker in my Etsy shop, actually. That's one of the ones I have to restock because I have sold out of it. So, oh yeah, my favorite series. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know. I'm feeling 
weird because I just drew like one of my main characters in a very weird way and I can't tell if I hate it or if I love it so he just doesn't look like himself right now <laughs> and I'm like I can't tell if I like you anymore <laughs> so my favorite series I would have to say in terms of tv series I'm not big on tv and I don't like a lot of the same stuff that I used to it's kind of hard to say, but when I was younger, I was really obsessed with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, so that will always be one of my favorite series. I've yet to watch the new one, and I would really like to because I liked the older ones so much. So I don't know if I have a favorite series. If you want to recommend me series, is comments, you absolutely can to watch them. Yeah, I'm open to suggestion. Um, my favorite Disney side character. I think my favorite side character is Pascal. I also really like Morph from Treasure Planet. He's pretty, pretty epic. I, I also like the robot from Treasure Planet, the one that they find like halfway through the movie. I think I've always thought he's so funny. I like him a lot. Um, and then if you could go back in time and work on any animated movie, what would it be? This is my last question. I'll do some blobs while I do this one. Um, if I could study under Hayao Miyazaki, I would probably die. That would be- so like any of the movies that he's ever done, I would want to work on. That is like hands down. Because I think it would be so much fun, I would like to work on The Last Unicorn because that movie is kind of like cracked out. I don't know. I feel like very few people have seen it. Everyone I talk to is like, I literally have no idea what that movie is. So I think it would have just been so much fun because it's so 80s. And Unico is another one that not many people know. And I think that would be just a fun one because it's so cracked out. That's the that's what I would work on. So thank you guys for asking me your lovely questions. We're gonna speed around these um, little blobs. Here is the finished page. It's kind of chaotic because I spent most of the time holding sushi, but I like the way her dress came out. I think he looks handsome and pretty as always. I like this cat because it looks weird. <laughs> and this rat. <laughs> so thank you guys. Um, thank you for tuning in. I will see you next time. And goodbye, my little froggy. <laughs>